morning morning everybody uh, welcome to another edition of the bread for soul convos bread for soul convos yeah with myself sir lsg and uh yeah thank you firstly for tuning in and uh, you know some of you are tuning in every day some of you might be the first time tuning in thank you nonetheless uh, hopefully we will have you on every morning and on today's show i am hosting happy to be hosting singer poet songwriter and a uh, modeling uh, sensation CEO. morning how are you morning i'm well in you i'm great thank you thank you so much sweet. Sweet, sweet. yeah just so people know why we started a bit late today you know um for her to look the way she looks these things take time you know she'll be drawing stuff yeah. How long does it take you just to get ready for something like that, like a performance, and like with regards to how you how you take um, your look so seriously? Honestly, ten minutes. Ten minutes. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't take me that long. It's just like literally. I think it, the reason is because I didn't sleep well today last night. But uh, ten minutes, like just like quick, fifteen minutes before the show, I was busy. So like. Then. My makeup is easy, thank God. Wow, okay, cool. Anyway, um yeah, but actually with regards to that, um, is it a thing for you that you you take you take it so seriously with regards to how you look, you know, and, and your style, your your clothing, the way you, you dress, just the way you come across. Is it a thing for you that you take it so so that serious? I think it's important for me, it's part of my preparation process i guess about me i'm going to work now this is kind of my work thing like some people have uniforms some people like suits some like as djs i'm sure you don't feel like you're working without your headphones or you know there's certain things everybody's got and this is mine I so um, yeah it's it's important and this it's distinct so you can see that yeah that's you there so i'm uh, happy it works it does it does definitely i mean we're missing the the other dots but it's you okay dots to get it back. yeah yeah it is what it is <laughs> for sure for sure and um i want to ask you with regards to your earliest memories of music you know um what are some of those i grew up in a very sort of eclectic music household like my dad is a zulu dude my mom is a scarlet lady and they would listen to everything from Lady Smith, Black Mambazo, Kenny G, um, Andreas Wallenweide, Shade, Dolly Parton and Kenny Rogers and the Bee Gees and um, Abba to, to a whole lot of things. And my uncle listened to people like Keith Sweat and Tony Braxton and um, I don't know, Janet Jackson and a little bit of Michael Jackson and then yeah, so there was all of that, and I'd like, I don't know why I gravitated to people like Angelique Kijo, because nobody was playing them at home, but if it played on TV, I'd listen to Angoro, or I'd listen to um, Ishmael Lo and um, Salif Keita when I was really little, because that would come up on TV, and I'd just watch them and be amazed. I had no idea what they were saying, they just looked and sounded amazing, you know, so it was very eclectic, it was a mix of things. So like long distance trips, there'd be a cassette tape of Andreas, Kenny G, Boys to Men, um, one of the super old 70s groups like the Manhattans or the Temptations, and there'd be Shade in the mix somewhere, and then, yeah, we'd go to KZN, it'd take about five, six hours. And that was like the earliest recollection of music I had, yeah. I think. Yeah, and yeah. What, what about your your own like starting you know points with regards to becoming a musician how did how did that become how did that unfold for you i i remember I, when i was a child channel O just started like it was a new channel thing and then i saw i saw a video of blue six um pure and miguel makes makes mm. of it that's just that version and it caught my attention with monique bingham love, monique bingham singing it and yeah. then sweet love came and you just like okay i like this sound what is this and gypsy woman um 
Diamond Life, and there's a couple of others, like, and Maloko as well. Like, that was, like, early, mid-90s or something. So I listened to that a lot, and I was like, okay, this sounds interesting. Um, but I didn't take my voice seriously, and I, I didn't think I could sing. I, my mother's just like, I too like we are bimba. That was a story I was when I'd sing, right? So she'd always be like, oh, God, this child. Um, but I'd always fluff around with songs. I learn songs that I like. I'd record them from the radio with a cassette tape and write the lyrics down as one of those kids. Um, but then I started writing poetry when I was in high school, and that was a happy mistake because I was telling somebody off because my name is a difficult name. So he was teasing me about my name, and I, I answered him in rhyme. It was a terrible rhyme, but it worked. It wasn't a roses and roses are red, violets are blue kind of rhyme. So I'm just like, okay, I might be onto something. Finally, um, with the poetry, I was in grade 10, so that's 15. Um, so I started writing poetry then and singing in the church choir, because like, um, yeah, the church started a youth choir at a church and um my mom my mom came to church this once when we were doing one of the big church celebrations like i think it was confirmation because I, I was raised catholic and the the nun the nun at church made me sing a solo so i had to sing it by myself in front of all of these people terrified and my mother hears me and then she watches everybody's response to me and she's like okay you might have something going on here. I'm like, it takes a whole church. <laughs> really? But I think that's where it started. Yeah. But it took a while for the for the songwriting and the and the singing to come together, or the poetry and the and the, and the singing to come together. Yeah, and, and I mean, talking about your mom, because um, I remember you and I recorded something. People didn't know. We worked on on something which never got finished, you know, be, because of myself. <laughs> I mean, like, not everything that we record and everything that, as an artist, not everything that you do or that you start working on has to be a, a release, you know. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. And I think, for me, the song was just not, you know, the beat, the playback that I gave to you that we recorded on was not moving me anymore, you know, like, and I, I didn't know what else to do. But anyway, I wanted to talk about your mom because your mom yeah. really uh, supports you like big time now, even though maybe in the earlier stages she, she, she didn't think that you would be, you know, a good singer. But I remember that day very well. Like we were only recording, you know, but your mom was like, yo, thank you so much for recording with her. Like she was yep. so happy as if like we are, we've just like won the summer or something. We were just recording yep. a song. Is, is that how, we, how it has um, been now? Like with regards to the support that you, you get from your mom? I've been very blessed with my mom because we don't come from wealth. I don't come from wealth or privilege. So there's always been around communities like mine where you have to do something something that's going to get you a stable income um, and my mom grew up in apartheid obviously and she's a colored woman so she could only teach and she could only be, do nursing and she's like i hate nursing but i could not see myself as a teacher so please do what you love to the best of your capacity no matter what it is you see how you do so rather live a fulfilled and happy life and in that support only she's opened the world up to me so she's she's incredibly supportive and i love her very much for that and she's made it easy in that sense to follow music because you know music is sporadic you don't generate money comes in when it does it does if it does sometimes it doesn't mostly doesn't mm. and she's been very supportive so she's always one of my biggest supporters. She always listens to my songs on radio. She'll tell me she's heard it. She'll share with everybody in the street. And be like, guys, my child, my child. And I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> no, I'm like, oh. But she's incredibly proud of me. So I'm yeah. very blessed. No, I love that. Love that so much. And talking about music and generating money, I've got a question for today's show to everyone who's watching. Um, you can answer in the comment section whether you're watching on the hit refresh page say lsg page best beats hit, um ceo um ceo's fan page as well um and the question for today is should more artists be doing more than one thing or should artists 
stick to what they do you know like i mean like uh, it's a broad question and i think it's a it just depends on on individuals but for me i think you know i'll answer it towards the end of the show yeah put your your answers in the comment section and we will put them up towards the end of the show should artists be doing one thing or more than one thing or should just should they just stick to being artists you know like what do you think about that because i know like I mean, you 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 model as well um what do you think about just especially with the, the current times art going forward sure i think personally for me it's been important to be versatile may not be the right word but to be doing more than one thing and and get a skill set outside of the art because I don't think right now that the arts are in a place to support artists in our country as yet, it, even before COVID, right? So I think it's very important for me. It's been very important and helpful that I could do things outside, although my art is starting to feed me and I'm incredibly blessed to be in that position because not everyone is. I had to do a nine to five job for a while. It was hard for me to do, but I think it was important for me to do more than one thing. Um, and even as an artist myself, I sing, I write, I do poetry, um, and I'm learning how to DJ because I think it's important. I've learned that um, house vocalists don't get booked as house vocalists as much as DJs and producers do. So I thought, okay, let me try and bridge that gap for myself, so I'm more bookable and can make more money. Yeah. I may not be the best DJ, I'm working on it. But slowly but surely it'll get to a place where I'm like, okay, she's book up on me and she must book her and give her some bread, man. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> I think that that's important. I don't think that, that vocalists, and especially who've done a lot of house, get as much places to play because there's not really a live culture infrastructure for vocalists in mm -hmm. this country, regardless of whether you are a main act, whether you're doing house or whatever it is, it's just very, 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 very small. And mm -hmm. it, I don't think that we have enough work as performers, um, especially vocalists, to, to make ends meet mm -hmm. half the time, at least my experience. And my, my peers that I speak to a lot have the same sort of um, conversations or issues, I mm -hmm. think. And I think it's a, it's quite an important thing that you that you mentioned with regards to DJing and um, you know just adding into what you think will work for you because I think um, more than just sitting back and be like ah, I'm not getting booked to sing you know only DJs are getting booked at least you, yeah. you 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 get to fit into that space and before you know it if you do it consistently if you do it long enough before you know it you'll become like a you know a household name who's known for DJing too. You know, and then yeah. you can pick up a mic and perform your own songs. You can, in that way, start even charging more than mm -hmm. somebody who's only a DJ. You know, so I think I think uh, it's a, it's a definitely yes for from me. You know, just work on those skills, please. Get better. <laughs> Get on those skills. <laughs> and uh, just before we we carry on with the music, um, I want to talk about identity, right? Like, um, because you, I saw a post of you. I mean, a post that you did a couple of weeks ago about like not being sure whether to consider yourself as a colored person, like mm. about belonging basically and, and not being black enough, you know, to be a black person, but also not being colored enough to be a colored colored. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. what is it about that? Can you explain about um, that post? It, it's kind of, it's kind of difficult, especially in this, this, this Black Lives Matter climate in this, the world just the, the show of the exposure the exposure of this gross racism worldwide i've always had like an issue of not feeling like i belong maybe it's maybe it's part of the generation i grew up in um that did not you have never fit in and they've made very sure that yes all of these wonderful zulu things are about me but the black kids are just like, no, you're not, you're not properly Zulu, so you don't fit in here. We don't want to hang out with you. And it's kind of followed me throughout life. It got cool when I got became an adult, maybe. But they're like, ha, she can speak Zulu. And I'm like, oh, guys, I'm not Zulu. It's okay. <laughs> but the colored people, colored people are the same. Like, they have this very aggressive and ugly way of saying, yeah, but you, you're okay. You can speak the K language. And I'm just like, 
oh, that's intense from from the colored people so i was always alone i guess i still am so i'm, I'm always alone because i was severely bullied for that just weird now but as a child i was i was bullied and i was it's part of the reason why i'm in my head so much and i write as much as i do i used to draw then but yeah i was bullied intensely as a child it mm-hmm. just it comes up in different ways now and you think okay so how do i identify um in in the world now who am i as a human being that's up to me for sure and racially i'm mixed for sure culturally who am i that's the difficult one for me Mm -hmm. i'm struggling to i've got a lot of work to do to identify as you know yeah yeah that's been tricky been very tricky yeah Mm. and i think i mean like obviously yes we can see that you used to draw a lot when you were young um it's evident but i'm just like on a more serious note with regards to identity and culture you know i responded to your post and i think that you know it's such a a a mind f for for us because like i i think it's just systems that we've been put in in america you are straight a straight up black person they they don't even need to negotiate that right like you are black (laughs) <laughs> yeah yeah and um i think that it's just systems like we've grown mm. into in this systems to say you are Tswana, you are zulu yes culturally my language is Tswana. your language is is zulu you know like you can speak zulu your your dad is, is zulu and um mm. but you've got you know a colored mom but you're also colored like i i feel that you need to be identifying with what you think you are you know and it doesn't and you can be both at the same time because you are both you know like i i just feel that um it should not be your identity should not be determined by the next person telling you what you are or what you're not but it should be rather yeah. internally you telling yourself who you are and who you are not you know what i mean and then like that other things um you know you don't need acceptance from from anybody to to tell yourself that you are zulu because you are zulu it's in your blood you know like there's nothing you yeah. can do about that um yeah. yeah but i also wanted to say um with regards to well moving on to your your name like what what's your full name because now people know you as ceo my full name is siobhan it's irish it's it's spelled s-i-o-b-h-a-n so i don't know not irish irish people have their spelling in their language i yeah. don't understand myself how that is siobhan but it's siobhan um so yeah, that's that's been that's been read as CEO ban, mostly. So I'm just like stop at the O. Stop. You know CEO or CEO? It can't be butchered worse because I've been CEO ban, CEO ban, CEO ban. It's been wild. Yeah, but but you, you you the wild thing that I've never met anybody any black person who's got a thing with spiders. I'm like yeah so because you, you used to call yourself CEO black widow black, yeah. what is there your your fetish with spiders one the, I don't know I think I like the black widow spider specifically because it's in nature generally the male of the species is prettier and the more dominant one and in nature the females that are the bosses that I knew of at the time were the black widow spider and the elephant the elephant is the boss she's the leader of the pack and i was just like i can't see myself with an elephant name i tried if i tried to think about it it didn't work so i'm like see how black water kind of rhymes i also like nighttime and black waters come out at night so i'm like i like that and it's you don't mess with the black widow because i'm a scary cat so maybe you just back off a little you know but um People always went straight to the "Are you a man eater?" situation. So I'm like, hey, it's fine. <laughs> okay. Oh wow! But wh- why did you get rid of the, the the black widow part of your name? Because it had some hectic connotations, and having to explain my name, CEO itself, is a long story. And then having to explain black widow, and that I, I like the strength of that female character or that female insect, I guess. It's work, so I'm just like, no, it's fine. Just drop it. Just pull yourself here. Yeah, it's fine. They'll figure it out. One, you go along. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. And um, 
I want to talk about connecting, you know, with regards to, um, I remember one of my favorite groups is um, Little Brother. And, um, mm. you know, also just thinking about uh, the foreign exchange, actually, specifically with um, Fonte and Nicolet. Nicolet is a guy from Netherlands, Fonte is an American rapper and singer. But these guys did two albums before they even met, you know, and, and that was actually the power of internet and MySpace back at the, at the time. How did you and um, Luca meet up the first time? Luca, Luca heard of me. He had to do a remix for a song I was doing for a film release with like two guys. Is it two? Yeah, two guys from Annadale who had met right at the beginning of my music journey, like back in 2013. They went by the name, <clears throat> excuse me, Marubini Music. So he had to do a remix for Dance After 12 that was released on Farm Records that year, I think. Yeah, towards the end of the year. And he liked how I wrote. He liked um, my tone and... Okay. Yeah, no, this internet is... I'll wait for for CEO to get back before we carry on are you there let me just check do this internet in henna date is not it's not playing nice with us actually before that let me rather do this Yeah, I hope that she will log back on. I see I've lost her completely. And uh, while we wait, there is a, a short performance that CEO did. I posted it yesterday and uh, I could just find it. Hopefully, I mean, it's very short. Uh, yeah, here we go. I found a place to run to Where light has gone the night loose Where my demons come to play To stay and haunt my days I'll find you and melt the darkness where love has left me a mess And I'm frozen in my cold maze From broken love From broken love And let me sing Ooh-ah, ooh-ah, ooh-ah Ooh-ah, ooh-ah, ooh-ah Ooh-ah, ooh-ah, ooh-ah <laughs> that is so dope um yeah so you back welcome back i mean the internet in Enadale is not the ones ne? i just can't wait <laughs> i can't wait for you to be like a superstar and get yourself and your mother out of there i mean nothing wrong with Enadale, but like you know just, just get to a, a 5G area in the northern burbs. <laughs> we are going, we will do that. We will do that. I can't even remember where we were, but anyway, let's just move on. Yeah, you, we were talking about Luca. Yeah, that's right. so that's how you met. Now. But I, um, before we carry on, actually, I've got a, a voice note that I want to play for you uh, mm. from a friend, and then we'll we'll carry on with the with the chat. Awesome. Wow, what do I say about CEO in a very short amount of time? They won't take up the whole interview because I got a lot to say, you know, about how, first and foremost, she's an incredible human being, um, artist, singer, songwriter. And yeah, I've had the privilege of working with her. Seeing her grow has been such a privilege to see, you know, everything she's done. And I'm just happy, man, to see her growing <clears throat> and doing a thing and it's just um the world needs to recognize it as well um technically 
you know, for me personally, uh, one of the best singer songwriters I've ever worked with, uh, tone wise, just story wise, the way she has the ability to tell a story within the way she writes her music is incredible. And yeah, man, tone wise, you already know, like so unique, so refreshing. And I think that's why every single producer wants to work with her. And we've actually had a discussion behind, you know, like the studio doors where everyone just wants to work with her. And it's like she's just getting flooded with people wanting to work with her from overseas to South Africa. And I just I just see like so much good things, you know, happening, you know, because she's sincere and she's a good person and she's a real artist that has a real story to tell. That is a word from Julian Gomes. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, how do you choose who you collaborate with? I'm going to ask you about your collaborations with Julian in just a bit. But, I mean, like he just said, so many people want to work with you, especially I'm assuming after the smash hit um, Thousand Memories. How do you decide um, the, the, the collaborations and that you want to take on? I actually should be a lot more selective. But <laughs> I'm just like I'm generally the, the process is if I like the song, the beat you send me because I work from the beat. It's it's more difficult for me to work to in terms of giving vocals over first before beat is created. It just it's harder and it takes longer. So I prefer to get the beat from a producer, and sometimes the beat is so good that I just say yes. And I write the song and I'm in trouble now because I've got a lot of music incoming. But like generally, it's that song for I'm, I, 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 I generally go for up and coming producers who I think have a very unique um, point of view, who have a brave point of view, haven't yet been tainted into a, a tainted too much by the industry, I guess, and who haven't been bitten by fame to the point where they need to follow a formula, you know, and they're still fresh and brave and bold and into telling their stories. And then people who are already in the industry and are very set and strong about this is my point of view, this is who I am, and this is what I'm going to tell, regardless of what the world expects of me, is the kind of people I gravitate towards. And they generally make brave, bold, and beautiful music, so I gravitate towards that. But I must stop now. You, the problem is that there's so many good ones. Oh my word! Yeah, it is hard. But yes, so good, so good. Wow. And uh, mm. I mean, one of before we we even talk about Julian, um, the collaboration that you just recently recorded. It doesn't even have a name yet, so I heard. But you've just worked with Ralph Gum on a tune, right? How how was that uh, process of collaborating with him? He's such a sweetheart, my goodness. I like, know, he's right? one of the sweetest people in the world. I'm like, oh my goodness. You should be full of nonsense. By all <laughs> right. You really should be full of nonsense because you've earned it. But he's not. He's, he's a darling. And he was so easy to work with. Very clear and communicative about what he wanted. Um, very, very open to suggestions. Um, he gave me feedback and asked for my input very much, which is beautiful. It was very, very collaborative. So it was wonderful. He's, he's such he's such a gem. He's such a sweetheart. My God, it's disgusting. Yeah, I know. I know that firsthand. Um, and people can definitely look out for that collaboration. I heard that sometime in August um, it, it yeah. should be out. And uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that personally. Um, but with back to your work with Julian Combs, how did you guys meet and also you know how d after recording the song a thousand memories were you aware already by that time that this is going to be a smashing hit never in my life did i think that i'm from nrl people come on <laughs> we don't, i don't i'm like how in what in what universe um julian had this love that it's a song i did with with uh, Lilac Jeans, the guys from so it. Yeah. So we did the song. It was a very sad and very really heavy song, but Julian liked how I wrote. I um, mean, liked the story and that. And he contacted me on Facebook, and I'm just like, there's no way Julian goes. It's no, no, no ways. No, no, it can't be happening. How do you know about me? I'm No ways. 
<laughs> so he, he sent me a message and he confirmed that it was him. And he, he's like, he'd like to work with me. I was like, ha, ah, guys, okay. I had to pinch myself and like everyone at home was like, what is wrong with this child? Uh, it was funny. But he sent me this beautiful beat. It didn't sound anything like the final product that you hear, but he sent that to me. I wrote for it. It didn't take long to write. I had a very interesting story about um, unrequited love and the reasons behind it. Um, and he liked it. He liked that it had a sort of, he had two perspectives and he could see that and he spoke to that um, and he really loved it. And then we made up to record. It took about three or four hours to record because Julian is a perfectionist. Like, yeah, I don't think I've, I've yet to work as hard as I've worked with Julian on the recording. <laughs> Even when he did music for my album, it was the same. So you work when you go recording with Julian, trust. <laughs> But it was worth it. And like, he didn't look like he was happy with the song at all. And I'm just like, yeah, does he even like it? <laughs> yeah. um, but honestly, when, still, till today, when I do music with people, I, 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 I'm I, not in it thinking, yeah, that, that's a hit. I never know. I can't tell you if the song is going to pop. I can't tell. If you as the producer I'm working with like the song, I'll double check with you. I'm like, you sure you like it? Is there anything else you want me to do? And if they're like, no, it's, it's cool, but it's great. And I'm just like, you blowing smoke up my nose, but it's fine. <laughs> uh, that's how I feel still. Um, and then they tell me, no, it's great, it's great. It's, and then I hear it after a while and I'm like, are you sure you like it? And I'm like, yeah. But I didn't think it was going to be where it began. Mm. I had no idea. I didn't think it was single worthy. Um, this little girl from Annadale, what do I know about singles and being cuts and legends remixing and it's just like what's going on i literally like a thousand memories i sat through like this i'm like what what yeah. how how that was amazing looked, right? it was amazing yeah i mean I like didn't it, you also sorry to cut you off you you got a, it got a, a a remix by osunlade you know um amongst many and uh, i want to know with regards to the success of a thousand memories right how did you firstly how did you receive the success as the so, the song was growing onto people and secondly um were your expectations met after that because yes you say you did not expect the song to be a hit but the song now is a hit now you see the song is playing everywhere now it's getting remixes everybody's playing the song Ed Jazz also mm. remixed the song but now how do you were you did you have expectations after that and where were those expectations met with regards to having a a, a hit like that no I, I didn't i didn't i'm like okay this looks like luck <laughs> honestly it looks like luck i don't i don't expect it to become anything else i'm honored to be singing i'm honored that so many people are listening to the song they really like it and to be remixed by ocean lade is a dream come true to even at jazz meeting him I was like oh my goodness that's amazing um so it was all incredibly overwhelmingly beautiful but i had no expectations i was just like okay cool i think i, I can do this music thing full time let's see that's that's what a thousand memories did for me it gave me a place to or it gave me a, an egg to believe or a, a seed rather mm. that i can actually do this full time Mm. Let's see. And I tried with follow-up songs. Some really popped, some didn't. But they all generally have beautiful lives in whatever capacity they're in and whoever they're with. And they've done well, some if incredibly well after that. And yeah, but yeah, it was... I didn't see that coming. Yeah, yeah. And um, I want to ask you then about difficult moments, right? Um not necessarily linked to a thousand memories but just in general as an artist what has been some of your most difficult moments to get through understanding or getting past um the the blimp of there was a stage where i didn't want to do house music anymore like i was done with house it was just like okay everything about this genre is about the producer regardless of what I add, this is how I felt and this is what it looked like because of like there was this incident where my with yeah a thousand memories was awarded for something but my name wasn't on the actual plaque 
for the song and that stung and I'm just like Kanti did my contribute to the song and it started to filter in, in in other aspects so that was difficult and I didn't want to do house music and I went to something that was entirely my own because I feel like a lot of the time as a vocalist you as much as you may take the spotlight in the song it's still the producer song that's been my feeling towards house for a minute so I was just like I don't want to do this anymore so I gave myself a break from it so that's one of the difficulties because I really love house I really 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 love house it's been a springboard for me in every way um and then and other difficulties personally is just how much of a real person is my goodness um last year was incredibly hard I still take COVID in 2020 over last year in a heartbeat. That's how hard last year was for me. Um, I remember going to meet with people to discuss my album with my label at the time, which is Kid Fun, because he did it three day two weeks. And we're going to these beautiful places, have these important meetings, and I'm roaming around Joburg, right, with a trolley bag. Because I have no way to stay and I have no car. So I've got to catch a taxi to get all, to all of these places. And this is hard because I have to figure out how I'm getting home. Because on this night, it was June the 28th. It was a Thursday. I was going, I'd, I'd had a shoot in Cape Town. So this is the balance. It's beautiful though. Beautiful balance. I had this beautiful shoot in Cape Town um, for, um, what was it? For the fix. So I'm doing a catalog for them wonderful to do as a model and then i'm flying back and i have to sleep at my friend's house in kempton park with my trolley bag and then after that i've got to go to santon and i'm getting a lift from kid Funk to go to santon because we have a meeting there with with important people and then that night i have a song a performance at nadia nakai's um album launch but i have to walk because i've got no money mm. I've got to walk through town in the dark by myself with all of these scary people around. And you've got to be brave and you've got to walk like you own the place so you don't get attacked. But that's one version of it. So that's hard. That's hard to do when you're just like, is it worth it? And the only reason I think I didn't actually end my life is because the music was doing well. Hmm. So that was dark. It was a really dark time. But that's just one of a few. Yeah. Damn. And, 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 and how did the music itself um, really pull you from, from such a place? I could, I, could, I could cry. I could cry and people heard me. And they liked it because they could relate because we're all human and there's stuff in my songs. They're not, they're not generally the most lyrically or image-wise. They're not beautiful or just pretty and happy songs. I don't write happy songs and people gravitate towards me and listen to me what maybe because i've got a very unique voice which i thank the most high for i didn't do anything for that but i can cry in my songs and people listen and they they hear me because i think i'm speaking to something that connects us um there's the certain things we've lived in various shades and, and forms mm. that they're like i i can hear it i've been there mm. that makes me feel like okay i'm not alone it must get better because they listen to me. Mm. Because this is gonna work. <laughs> and I've just gotta hold on a little longer. Just 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 take a zero like a man. Yeah. You'll get there, you know. Just try. Just try. You're doing well. People if if, if if you were not doing well and just because I understand house. House does not need a vocal. Music does not need a vocal. So people don't have to listen to you. They really don't. House is a dance genre. People go there to dance and escape a lot. Mm. Especially if you look at like parties, they go there to let go and let loose and have a good time. But people listen. I'm like, okay, I respect that. And that you're listening it tells me I'm doing something right. I think. Mm. Get and, out. And I think um, um, I love that you share your story like this because to me, what I'm hearing is like you are somebody who's on a journey, you know, to you know greatness with regards to the music with regards to just you being an artist and some of these things that you go through the fact that you overcome them mm. and you're able to kind of pull yourself together and and and, and still move forward is what it's a story that you will be able to tell 
even when you reach your success you know like even when you whatever success uh, means to you after you reach that these are some of the stories that would have made you who you are that will shine mm-hmm. through your music you know that will shine through yourself as a person because i think that there is a beauty in adversity you know sometimes it's it's difficult to see it when it's happening but when difficult mm-hmm. moments are happening they are beautiful things to take from that you know that will propel uh, us forward as people and um you know i mean there's another song that you were uh, an award actually that you were definitely uh, accredited for the music video that you did <laughs> the music video that you did with uh with Dawson for the song that you did with Dawson um how do yeah. you feel about the award and and what does the award mean to you i'm very happy about it but it was such a funny time for us to make that video it was ridiculous cuz we were both we had to be romantic with each other and we're like i want to get <laughs> like they wanted us to be rolling in bed such a bona did you see that pool scene do you know how hard that was <laughs> so that like was like this and i was like okay i'm gonna try and kiss you on the nose he tried he couldn't like i'm gonna try and kiss you on the forehead he tried he couldn't it was hilarious so i'm cracking jokes the entire time trying to you know less of the situation and i'm just like it's a beautiful looking video and that that awkwardness isn't there and they've got enough moments to make it look cute and romantic and sweet and whatever they needed it's great um and i'm happy it got an award show but it was hilarious because we were both like <laughs> and we think about that all the time and we die we just start laughing because we're like yeah okay yeah okay. don't you yeah, see it was- this thing of of being a model too you know just to, jumping on to that cuz i'm dating a model there eh? and i'm yes. thinking now there's this shoot that's supposed to look all like sexy and stuff and i'm like eh, i need to work hard so she doesn't need to do this you know then she can be like no i don't i'm not taking that job that's what uh, that's that's one of my main goals but um we'll talk about your modeling career in in just a bit um i want to yes. talk about your album subtext um the style in it you know is it do you do it con- i mean consciously that you are doing you are not going to do house specifically with this album and and you you're going to delve into other parts of neo soul a bit of rap that was a conscious choice yes that i i started doing subjects 2016 um yeah the first song for subjects was yeah written ar- around that time <clears throat> excuse me and uh i wanted it to be mine and i didn't feel like i could claim a house album i'm up at, at the time i'm up against heavyweights and all of the heavyweights are like males also so i didn't feel like i could compete there as well on a subconscious level now that i think about it in in, in hindsight um also i'm not a bussy and i'm also not a ladies ama and they've got they think down i'm also not a zion and i'm also not a j something so just like go see what is you because you're going to go to explore yourself you're not right because usually the house stuff was written from a place of okay so lsg just told me that he that he wants to make enough money that he does his girlfriend never has to do sexy shoots i think okay that would me how would i put that in a song that's how most of my house songs come from Then I thought okay let me pull inspiration from Sio. Where is Sio right now? Sio is falling in love, okay? What does love for you look like? Let's write about that because that's an exploration. Subtext is an exploration of love for me. Mm-hmm. At the time, it's a capsule of that. So you're like okay, cool. Let's write that. Let's go get songs that people can dance to but that are not house. It needs to not be house. It needs to be cool, it needs to be interesting, it needs to be a little strange. because I'm a little strange. Um but yeah, it needs to represent the space I'm in now and I need to be able to create on it and I'm very blessed to have found the producers I did for that because they they're incredible. Um and I've massive love for them. It's it's insane to have a song by Ed just before you were song for him so I'm incredibly blessed. I'm of so so on it for that. It it, it worked out beautifully and also I, I give a lot of love to Kid Funk. I need to say that because he everybody liked the idea of Sio not doing a house album because naturally I'm not really a house vocalist. 
in terms of how I write and sing. Um, and they were very excited about it, but nobody knew what to do with it. And it's like, bring it here. And I'll I'll see what we do. We'll see. No promises. None. I don't know where we're going to, I don't know where we're going to land up, but I'll take it. And I'll run with it. And he's done incredible things for me. Yeah. I have big love for him. I will ask you about Kid Fong, but before I do, I just want to let people know <laughs> that the album is out. That's the cover. CEO subtext. It's out on Stay True bts what does bts mean it, it's a true beats oh it's a true beats hey yeah uh, alan and he's a uh, you know he's, he's got this cool way of doing stuff and i like the cover too the covers that they do for stay true um but what is your how is your relationship been you know you've licensed the song on on to stay true ever since um between you and alan kid funk amazing 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 like i didn't expect anything again he told me we had a meeting because I, I came in, I'm like, I didn't know I wanted to be on State True Beats because State True Beats was nothing. Maybe not nothing, but it was a small, it was a small niche um, label on the side and I wanted it to be on the big label. That's the one with all of the push and the attention. It makes it, and it's just like, it's not a house thing, but trust me, trust me. I'll, I'll do my best to get this, this album where it needs to. And he did. So our relationship has been good. To the point where I actually trust Ellen with my life right now. Yeah, yeah. Because of what he did was he did for me musically, just yeah, it was insane. Yeah. I got Apple Music Artist of the Month for that album. Mm. I got a lot of I got to play on the stage with um Tom Mesh because of that album and because I made that kind of music and he pushed it in the right direction. I've also played for, I've opened for Lion Babe virtually because of the sound of that and because you got it to the right people that got it the right attention. So, mm. epic love, always. I do have a, um, a, a voice note just before we close. I mean, like, we still have to talk a bit about your modeling, but let's talk, uh, let me play this voice note for from uh, Kid Funk and then we carry on. See what's happening this is kid funk and i've been asked to um just drop a little summing summing about uh, someone that i've worked with very closely since opening up my record label and since uh starting my own uh radio show on five FM selective styles and that's someone is ceo who um, i know you are speaking to today sir lsg um very 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 special artist we met probably five years ago and uh since then We've been on a musical journey together, really. Um, I've, I've collaborated with so many songs with Sia because she's just so good. She's probably one of the best writers in, in South Africa, hands down. She really knows how to um, kind of get in, into her soul and express that through words and poetry. And uh, I was blessed enough to be able to represent her album on my sister label to Stay True Sound, Stay True Beats last year. Um, her debut album, Subtext, which uh, we managed to get uh, album of the month on Apple Music, not even album of the month, artist of the month on Apple Music, which was an incredible uh, feat for Sia. And uh, I just see her getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Her performance has just gone like just got better and better and better. And she she really embraces that live space now. And uh, it's been it's been an amazing journey watching her grow so much. And you know, when lockdown is over, the world is going to be ready for Sia because she is an absolute worldwide artist. She is up there with some of the best. Um, that's my five cents about Sia. Much love. Yeah, I want to talk about performance, though. Like, um, how do you view performance and how have you grown um, in, in that space? I mean, we spoke about how South Africa, especially our house music scene, it's not really for performance, you know, in terms of the setup, you know, I've, I've been to gigs where I'm performing with Ayanda Gia or Gafele and the mic is not working, there's no monitors, but like with regards to doing your style of music, how has performance, your performance grown uh, through the years? It's been, it, it used to terrify me because it started in the club with the house thing. <laughs> Yo, it's just a place to be so scared. Because you don't know exactly, you don't know if the monitor is going to work, you don't know if the mic's going to, you don't know. You don't know how you're going to sound, you don't know how the sound is going to move in the room. What? It was terrifying. 
Um, so it took me a while to get comfortable. It took me a while. And then I started playing music that wasn't, I started doing acoustic music, which I felt more comfortable with because I could hear myself. That's important for me. And any vocalist, you need to be able to hear yourself singing. Because if you don't hear yourself, you sound, you sing with key. So it sounds like you can't sing. Yeah. So you're like, ah, guys, I can't sing, I promise. <laughs> they want you sing live and they just can't sing. Like, there's something, what's the tuning going on there? You're just like, yeah, guys. Um, but with the live setup, it, it's been wonderful having Dave with me because we bounce things off of each other and there's a beautiful synergy with us. And practice makes perfect. We practiced a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. We can play the songs inside out, back to front, upside down now. Um, it's beautiful to engage with people um, live. It's a whole different thing than, I don't know, like being online is wonderful, but it doesn't compare. It doesn't compare to a whole room or a crowd of people engaging with you and singing back to you blows my mind. It's beautiful. And it's, it's, been, it's been fun engaging with them because I'm like this all the time like i have stupid little skits in between songs and people would crack out laughing into the next song because i'm telling a funny story about the song or whatever but it's been lovely and having dave on board is a complete blessing because he's a genius like i saw him play two keyboards i'm like lord thank you jesus lord for god how are you playing two keyboards my man you heard the song once you're ready yeah okay thank you nice. he's, he's, he's amazing yeah, yeah amazing and having Day one board just makes it so much more fun, professional, and easy. And that's yeah. wonderful. Yeah, and I, I really hope that one day, actually soon, I need to have Dave Martian on the show. You know, yeah, I think he's an amazing artist too. Um, yeah, sorry, sorry. Uh, just to talk about your, your modeling career, right? Um, mm. I know, like, for example, you know how cold it is right now? I think some people don't really know. If it's so, this cold, companies are preparing their spring and summer shoots now so like you'd be shooting a spring bikini setup in winter in this cold weather sometimes they have to even blow wind so it looks like you know you're kind of at the beach it's so cool and splash you with cold water if they need to um what are some of the challenging things or misconceptions that people have about modeling but that are really really challenging i mean yes you look pretty you know, um, selling product and, and being part of a certain campaign. But what are some mm. of the misconceptions and challenging stuff about being a model? My experience has been rough for a couple of reasons. Because I'm, I'm stubbornly myself. I'm unapologetically myself. And I'm, I'm, not the, I'm not a canvas. And I think people in the modeling game want you to be more canvas. Like, my hair is actually an act of rebellion. Um, because there was a fashion week I went to that liked me and booked me for fashion week with my afro, because I've got an afro underneath this. But they want to straighten it. And I'm just like, but guys, if I wanted straight hair, they would be straight. Why do I have to, why do I have to um, compromise my Africanness and my blackness and Eurocentrify myself to fit in and get this work? So I kept the dreads and I found an agent that would um, pump me as a as a model with dreadlocks, but still it's been rough. Um, you have to be skinny, it's still very Eurocentric. It's, they still want a lot of white girls walking out and being a size. What is it? That's the Europe standard you're supposed to have. Under 90 centimeters around your hips and and the 60 around your waist or something like that. So you have to be a skinny long thing and you must always look perfect. And it's it's a whole job of itself to just look like that. And then the campaigns are, are wild. You're shooting hot things for winter in the summer. So you're sweaty and you're disgusting. And even your, the fashion shows are a mess because you're hot and you're sweaty and sticky. And the opposite for the south for the summer collections happening in the winter you're freezing shooting these summer campaigns and shivering and you're supposed to look when they call action you're supposed to look like you've got the best life you can practice me <laughs> when they call vibrating you're just like oh. <laughs> <laughs> but i mean i love the work i love the shoots and the and the, the, the characters you get to play but it's hard it's still very it's still very eurocentric 
and mm. everybody i don't know i don't know when it's going to level out and become fair and i'm a little fed up with it to be honest i don't really want to do it anymore mm. Mm. but we do get a good job hey you get a white elephant and you can pay rent for a few months which is nice mm. so that's another reason why you do it i know all I about that yeah, yeah there's been moments where i we didn't have gigs but at least yeah. you know three months ago she would have done a, a shoot and then boom you know something comes through and then we yeah. can we can we can buy some food um just to yeah. close the show with regards to, with the question of the day that i asked earlier should artists be doing more than one thing or should artists stick to what they do and i've got a few answers frank hooper obagengare they must do more than one and invest a lot yeah man definitely uh no matter more minimum of three streams of income and uh, david lane says the music industry is not what it was so artists almost need to diversify in order to bring uh, in regular income and enable mm. them enable the time required to create new material definitely I, I resonate with that and i'll explain why uh, but i just want to read the last one from the cage says yes i think artists should have plans preferably in the same industry the management uh, administration as a safety net but should not disturb them from their art it can also be yes. an investment space like property and um i mean like for me you know the kind of music that i do i take time with my music you know so i mean the last r- album i did was in 2017 three years ago yeah. it'll be four years next year and i don't think i'll be dropping an album next year either so it okay. takes time and um you know the time it takes for the next album to come out sometimes it seems like the hype dies down now you're not the talk of the town anymore now people are not booking you easy so my job has always you know helped in that sense as much as i'm passionate about my job at least I, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to still be a freelancer in the tv industry and it's something that i love mm-hmm. but um mm-hmm. it helps you know if you have something constantly coming in it does help but the, the other side of it is that it takes away the time so i can't be releasing albums as frequently as i would want to because i'm not in studio as as frequently as i as i would like to um, if i'm not mm-hmm. doing this show i'm busy doing freelance work or i'm planning to get you know new shows and stuff like that so so i think um for me it works for me because i i know the art will not go away as long as i keep practicing keep doing music um wherever i, I find space that will always come through you know and and when an album comes through i know that it's not something that's rushed it's it's not a desperate body of work you know in a sense mm-hmm. that I did it in my own time, in my own way, and I'm happy with it. Um, yeah. But you are the same, right? Like with regards to 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 art. Yeah, yeah, I am. I'm always, I'm always, one. I'm always busy with stuff. Um, I also, I also sing for other, other for adverts. I guess as you call it. So I sang on a couple of ads, and they also help. Um, most of the time I'm at home, so I am I'm creating for myself and whatever in that sense of I can do a lot more than you have the, the time to do because your job's a lot more time consuming whereas I'm called through for a day or two to shoot something or record a vocal for something that people want to use in an advert that's a day or two from my week and then the rest of the time I'm practicing and making music or writing poetry, whatever it is. Mm. So yeah, you need to. And I'm also looking at other things. I've got a whole poetry page that I want to turn into a book one day um, and see nice. how that happens and what that does. But I'm always in a creative space like you are because you're also creative in that sense. So I mm. think creativity sort of tumbles into each other or blends into each other. So I'm always working on something and I'd like to do other things eventually. But yeah, it all helps. It all adds up. Sure. It all adds up. So I've got a lot of I, I fortunately the jobs I do and I've been getting um, by the grace of God because I don't understand how I would have gotten this otherwise. But um, allow me the freedom to do my music and keep a roof over my head mm. and some freedom, which, which is blessings. Yeah, because not everyone has that. Like yeah. True. True. Um, you've recently released a song with Jackie Queens, right? Yes. 
Cool, super, super. I've got on, on the show tomorrow, um, guys who are watching, got singer and songwriter Chiki Queen. She's or, originally from Zim, but she's based mm. here in South Africa. Um, super artist too, and a hustler of note. I'm looking forward to that conversation. But um, yeah. just in closing, CEO, thank you so much for, for spending your time. I really wish you all the best, and I wish that you stay believing you know in in in, in your career in in your art in your gifts because those are the things that will you know become the fruits um for you much later in life so stay believing never ever not believe in yourself you know. thank you thank you and you too thank you for having me it's been wonderful i've chatted with you this morning and all the best with, with everything your show is great and i hope I actually hope this gets to TV somehow. You know, it doesn't have to be my episode, but your favorite ones. But just like, it would be nice for for it to get onto a, a TV a TV station or channel and and, and everybody else here because it's a really cool show. And thank you so much for showing the spotlight on artists and what we do and what life is like for us and and giving us a place to express. It's been wonderful, and I love your show. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much, and I really do hope that it does get on TV, on radio, but if it if it doesn't, actually it will, you know, it, it will. Oh, it's just a matter of time. Yeah, it's just a matter of time, to be honest. And um, yeah. also, it's a matter of keeping on doing it, you know, as well as possible, um, mm -hmm. uh, efficiently as well, and, and just to try and share these stories with people, because I do think that that's how we learn as people. We learn best from sharing experiences with one another. Um, yeah, my daughter is looking at me funny now, so I think I need to I need to wrap it up. Anyway, uh, thank you so much. And uh, to everybody who's watching, thank you for watching the show. And um, please remember to stay creative. Please comment and uh, tag somebody who might learn from the conversation and share the video so more people can see it so we can grow the show. Uh, but most importantly, let's all remember to remain creative. Peace out. Yeah.